Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. This week, the news has been full of reports that three Chinese astronauts or taikonauts are trapped or stranded in space, stuck on the Chinese space station, Tiangong. Now, uh, what's actually going on here and how serious is this? Depending on the news source, the headlines make this sound more or less serious. And China doesn't often talk about issues with their space program, so there must be something going on. Now, as a bit of background, the Tiangong space station is China's third manned space station, and this is a permanently manned station, or at least it has been for the last few years. First module was launched in 2021, with two additional modules launched in 2022, and then they started permanently crewing the station on six-month rotations. It's also supposed to get a space telescope module in 2026, although I think that is a separate module that flies next to the station and isn't necessarily permanently attached to it. Now, you don't often hear about this space station in Western media unless there's some problem. For one thing, the U.S. does not cooperate with China on their space programs, and U.S. astronauts are basically not allowed to visit the Chinese space station or interact with Chinese taikonauts unless there's some sort of an emergency. There are various laws on the books in both countries that kind of prevent international cooperation the way the U.S., Russia, and other countries do with the International Space Station. The Chinese space station also doesn't have a ham radio repeater the way the International Space Station does. I think technically Tiangong has the equipment on board to operate a ham radio station, but they just don't have it turned on all the time, and they don't have the crossband repeater set up the way the ISS does. So there's not quite as much interest in this from the radio amateur community or the amateur satellite community because there's just not that much going on with it from a radio perspective that we here on the ground can hear. Now there are some interesting radio signals from Tiangong and I will look at those a little bit later in the video here. I just wanted to get some of the preliminary stuff out of the way. Now I'm filming this on November 6th of 2025 and the news about this incident just came out in the last couple days, there are currently two crews at the space station of three Taikonauts each. So uh, Shenzhou 20 is the outgoing crew. They were due to depart uh, yesterday on Wednesday, and they're being replaced by the Shenzhou 21 crew. 21 mission has started, led by Commander Zhang Lu, with China's youngest Taikonaut to date, Wu Fei, and the payload specialist Zhang Hongzhang. The three will spend the next six months on board China's space station. The crew members of Shenzhou 21 were embraced by the crew of Shenzhou 20 in China Space Station. And I realize I'm probably mangling all the pronunciations of these Chinese words. I get in trouble for mangling American pronunciations because people don't always like my Alaskan accents. So there are two ships docked at the space station, two of these Shenzhou craft, and these are China's version of the Russian Soyuz craft. They're kind of based on Soyuz. They're a three-part uh, spaceship with a uh, living module at the front, a re-entry module in the middle, and then a service module at the rear. And when these re-enter, they basically all split apart. The uh, living module and the service module burn up in the atmosphere, and the re-entry module is the only part with the heat shield. That comes back to Earth and uh, lands under parachutes. And apparently that re-entry module is what has an issue. There are reports that it was struck by space debris at some point, or space junk, and that could have various amounts of seriousness. The Chinese space station has been hit by space junk before. Back in 2023, they actually lost part of their power supply when one of the solar panels was damaged by space debris. And ironically, this crew who is supposed to be returning has spent a lot of their time on the station beefing up its defenses against space junk. They've done multiple spacewalks to install shielding, to install kind of debris blocking or absorbing panels on the space station to help prevent incidents like this. Space debris is becoming more and more of an issue lately. Several countries, including China, have tested anti-satellite missiles, and tests like this, as well as accidental collisions and rockets exploding, other issues have basically spread a lot of junk into space. And this can range from the size of partial rocket bodies, rocket engines, all the way down to paint chips, to tiny little chunks of debris. And when these chunks are moving at orbital speeds, especially if they're moving opposite to the orbital path of something like a space station, the relative velocities, the relative energy involved can be huge, even for something like a paint chip. There were some stories years ago during the space shuttle program of paint chips basically leaving tiny little craters in the skin of the space shuttle. So 
Anything larger than that, like a bolt or a piece of an exploded satellite, could be a huge problem if it impacts an active spacecraft or especially a manned spacecraft. And again, we don't really know how serious this is. There have been space debris impacts on other craft in the past. The International Space Station has had it happen. They had their uh, Canada arm slightly damaged by space debris. And occasionally the ISS crew actually has to get in their lifeboats and prepare for a possible evacuation when there's a piece of debris detected that might cause an issue. The larger pieces can be detected with radar and tracking instruments, and so space station crews have some amount of warning if there's something big coming. They can either get in the lifeboat, they can move the station with thrusters, or just monitor the situation. But smaller stuff, again, like paint debris, like individual bolts, might be kind of a surprise if it shows up unexpectedly at high velocity. While the Tiangong space station doesn't necessarily have a dedicated lifeboat capsule the way the ISS does, they do still have two ships docked at the station, both of which are theoretically capable of undocking and re-entry depending on the amount of damage to one of those. Even if the hull is compromised and it's no longer airtight, the crew has spacesuits. They could re-enter wearing their spacesuits. Although if the damage is in an area that is subject to heating, then there could be superheated gases entering the spacecraft during re-entry, which can be a problem. And if the damage is to the heat shield itself, which seems unlikely because that's an area of the ship covered by the service module, but it could happen. And if that heat shield is damaged by space debris, then the ship might not be able to safely re-enter at all. Now, China does have a number of these Shenzhou spacecraft kind of ready to go. They have rockets ready to go, so they can send up another one on fairly short notice if they need to pull the crew off the station. And probably what will happen is the outgoing Shenzhou 20 crew is going to just use Shenzhou 21's ship to come back to Earth, and then China will have to replace that ship. And of course, this isn't the first time that people have been so-called stranded in orbit or trapped in space. When Boeing's Starliner failed last year, it left the two test astronauts stuck on the International Space Station. Starliner was sent back to Earth unmanned, and it landed okay, but it wasn't quite trustworthy enough for NASA to be okay with putting the astronauts back on it. So they just had to wait around for another ship. And there were enough craft docked at the space station. There were enough lifeboat seats available that if there had been an emergency during that time period, everyone could get off the station. Now, Tiangong is a little bit smaller than the International Space Station, so having six people on board might stretch the capacity a little bit. I'm sure they have plenty of life support, food, water, oxygen, all of that stuff, but it's probably going to get a little bit cozy. They might not have enough beds, they might not, uh, they might have to share the toilet, uh, things of that nature, so it's going to be a little bit cramped for them up there. Now, Potentially, they can use their ships as extra living space, and there's also, I believe, a cargo ship docked. These are not human-rated ships, but they do add a lot of extra pressurized capacity to the station. So, and I'm sure we'll be finding out more about this in the coming days. Again, this just happened a few days ago, so there's really no details available. And normally I wouldn't make a spur-of-the-moment video like this, but I happen to be uh, tracking some other satellites lately, and I thought, well, this is a good opportunity to track uh, the Tiangong space station, listen to it on radio frequencies, and see, can I hear anything from it? Now, I don't believe they're transmitting anything that is um, open to the public or able to be decoded by amateurs such as myself, but they are uh, sending down telemetry data, and that could be interesting to look at. If you're a long-time viewer, you're familiar with my garage covered in satellite dishes. And if uh, this is your first time, no, it's not a car wash and it's not a former radio station. The hogwash sign came from a local surplus auction. Today we're going to be using this dish. This is a repurposed television dish from a recreational vehicle. And this one has been set up for the microwave S-band which is where these telemetry signals are. This is a motorized tracking dish, so I'll be able to automatically follow the space station as it passes overhead and stay tuned into that during the entire pass to get the best signal. So it's still early in the pass, but this strong signal has shown up around the expected frequency. It's a little bit higher, but if the station is coming towards us, then it will be Doppler shifted higher, and it does look like it's dropping slightly in frequency every so often, so yeah, I would say this is probably the telemetry signal from the Chinese space station. That is super strong. That is a very strong signal. It's not necessarily useful for me because I don't know how to decode this. I don't know what to do with this. I will we'll look around online and see if anybody knows how to decode uh, Chinese space station telemetry, but 
I haven't seen any uh, tools to work with this yet, so we'll have to see if we can find out more about it. If we play back this recording and slow it down a little bit, we can see that very classic Doppler curve that tells me this is coming from low Earth orbit. Uh, we can see the very classic S shape here as the Doppler shift is much more noticeable towards the middle of the pass, less noticeable towards the ends of the pass because the ship is farther away and its relative uh, motion is not changing as much relative to me as an observer here on the ground. And this is the kind of Doppler plot that more experienced folks than me would be able to use to actually figure out the exact orbit, the speed, and other characteristics of the station. I am definitely still just a beginner at things like this and I'm always learning more about these space topics, radio topics, orbital parameters, all kinds of things that go into uh, the radio, satellite, and amateur space hobbies. If anyone out there knows more about potentially decoding these telemetry signals or finding other interesting radio signals from Tiangong, I would love to hear about it because this is something that's been on my to-do list for a while and this recent space junk incident just kind of moved it up on my to-do list a little bit, so we're looking at it now instead of later on. But I, I would like to look at this in more detail in the future maybe when I learn a little bit more about the radio systems on the station. Hopefully one of these days they will activate their ham radio repeater and we will have another orbiting high power repeater just like the International Space Station. That would be a really cool thing for radio amateurs around the world to use. So keeping my fingers crossed that uh, China gets around to setting that up. I hope this has been an interesting video for everyone and I will try to revisit this topic in the future depending on what I have time to look into and what news we hear about future developments on the Tiangong Space Station. If you'd like to see more space, satellite, and ham radio topics like this, check out my other videos and consider subscribing to the channel if you want to keep up on future videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon and $10 and $20 members can get their names right here at the end credits to show their support for Save It For Parts. Thank you to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.